What's up guys, my name's Ike, I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker based in Australia, currently traveling the world. Today I'm partnering up with Luminar Neo to show you some of the brand new features that have just dropped in their recent update. We'll be going through how I use auto adjust and some of the depth based fog enhancements, plus a few other tips of how I shoot and edit my photos. These photos that we're going to be going through are from a shoot I did recently in the Great Otway National Park in Victoria, Australia. So let's jump into our first shot, which is a wide shot of Hopeton Falls. And first things first, we'll go straight down to develop panel and just hit auto adjust. Now using auto adjust might seem like you're cheating or it's being lazy. It's just being smart. It saves you time. I do it to literally every single photo that I edit. I'll hit auto just to give me a starting point. It gives me a foundation. It gets my exposure right. This looks great straight off the bat. We've already gone from this to this. Obviously, I'm going to fine tune it from here, but the auto adjust just gets you started. So I'd recommend do that to literally every image you import. From here, I'm going to leave exposure as is. I'm pretty happy with that. Highlights, I'm going to actually bring those up because I want to make the waterfall pop, which seems to be the density of the highlights. Uh, now shadows, I'm going to pull those right down. I'm going to go into my blacks and whites. I'm going to lift the blacks back up a little. Now this essentially is counteracting bring the shadows down but what it does is preserves a bit of detail in the shadows and gives a nice soft overall look which quite matches this shot as it was shot on an overcast day in the afternoon so it really gives that nice cinematic moody feel which is what I'm going for in my images. Now one little tip when composing your images a trick I learned through my filmmaking is sticking to the 60 30 10 rule which is basically your color composition so 60 percent of your image should be one color 30 percent should be a different color and 10 percent should be another color so if you stick to that rule it stops your images from being too chaotic with colors obviously it's a guideline you don't stick to it exactly don't get out a calculator and start calculating areas of your image but just as a rough guideline sort of three key colors in the image so with this image we've probably got 60 percent which is kind of a brown slash blacky color 30 percent which is our green and 10 percent is going to be like the white the highlights and that's pretty much it so i really just want to emphasize those colors so any colors that don't fall into those three colors i'm going to hew towards one of those three colors from here i'm going to jump straight down into our color and just adjust some temperature here we're going to bring up the temperature a little i feel like somewhere about there is looking really nice in this image and tint down ever so slightly. The next thing we're going to do is go straight into our color panel, the HSL, and I'm going to go with the hue. I want to bring my yellow hue towards the green slightly, green towards yellow. What we're doing there is bringing all of our green color to the same tone of green. The sort of green that I really like is a nice kind of tropical palm green, which is this kind of yellowish yellowish green I guess. Just looking all around the image trying to make sure that it's kind of looking quite consistent overall. There's not really any colors in this image so I'm not going to play around with the hue much else here. I think we jump straight across into saturation. I'm going to drop the yellow saturation down a touch but bring up the green and we'll get that to a point probably about here really bringing out those greens. I generally desaturate greens in the image but this image the green is the hero of the shot so I really want to make it pop. Next I'm just going to drop the saturation of all these other colors here as much as they're probably not in the shot i just really want to make sure they're not at all unless this you know there might be some funky banding or whatever just completely remove it out of there it's nice and clean this is our pretty much final edit here so i'll show what i've done with the colors here very subtle you barely notice the difference so we've gone auto adjust and then some slight minor adjustments and we've gotten to this and if I'm honest, this is looking great. I'm stoked with this image. The only thing I think here is it's feeling a bit flat. I didn't have any foreground element here. It's quite a wide shot. It's just not much depth. What I want to do here is I'm going to have a play with adding some atmosphere and hopefully bring a bit more depth to this image. And we're going to change the mode to fog. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dial up the amount. Obviously, this is too much. This is overkill. Uh, we're going to bring it back somewhere around here. Now here, you'll notice with the depth tool, the more depth means more of the depth that's covered by fog. Less depth means less of it's covered by fog, which is really cool because here what I can do is I can kind of set the depth to just cover the waterfall and keep my foreground free of the fog, which makes it feel realistic. It makes it feel like the fog was actually there when I shot it, not just added artificially. It's really bringing some great depth to this image. And it makes sense that there's light because there's light coming down to the waterfall here. I think overall it's looking great. I might just jump back into my develop panel and I'm just going to make some slight minor adjustments on the exposure. I'm super happy. This is great. I'm, I'm stoked with this image. Like this went from this, a pretty dull, flat looking image to this, which is honestly much better than I thought it would be. It was not the greatest day for taking photos. I was focused on taking video this day. It was not my priority at all, but 
this has surprised me. This is actually a really nice image. And then I'll just show you here a before and after with the atmosphere. So this is without it, which again, it's a nice image, but it's just flat. And you add this and you give the image so much more depth. This is our final edit, before, after. Stoked with this, looking really great. That is it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something from this video, and if you take anything away from it, use the auto adjust tool. It's a game changer. It will save you so much time. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on the atmosphere tool. Do you think it added to my images, or do you think it kind of felt fake and took away from them? Drop a comment below and let me know. Catch you in the next one, guys.